This video is about a model of computation called the Turing machine. The Turing machine was proposed in 1936 by Alan Turing. A computer program, an algorithm, or a function are essentially the same. But what is their definition? A model of computation defines the rules of how the output of a mathematical function is computed from a given input. If we want to obtain a simple theoretical model of a machine that can do exactly the same computations as a real computer, what building blocks do we need? First, we need something to represent the current state of our program. We might have several such states, and the transitions between these states also need to be defined. The states and the transitions define the rules for computing the program's output. A set of states with transition rules is known as a finite automaton. In a real computer, they correspond to the computer program. We also need some memory to store data. A simple form of memory is a tape, which is for simplicity infinite in both directions. This tape consists of cells. The machine can read data from these cells and write data into them. A pointer marks the position on the tape, where we are currently reading data from, or writing data into. After executing a calculation step, this pointer can either move one cell left or right, or stay at the current position, depending on the current state. This seems weaker than the memory of real computers, which can access any memory cell at any time. The values on this tape at the beginning of the computation are considered the input to the machine, and at the end of the computation, the tape holds the output. When starting the machine, the memory pointer is usually on the first symbol of the input. Each memory cell can store one symbol from a predefined alphabet. For simplicity, we assume to have an alphabet with three symbols. To represent data, we use binary symbols, zeros and ones. It often helps to have an additional symbol for an empty cell, for example, this bottom symbol. Together, these building blocks form the well-known theoretical model of computation called the Turing machine. Although the Turing machine is a model of computation, we can interpret it as a function, since it converts an input to an output. Like a Python program, a Turing machine is not defined for all inputs. A Turing machine can for instance run forever and never halt. Let us look at a short example of a Turing machine in action. We want to increment a number. The number is given as input on the tape in a binary representation. We write the number backwards, so the least significant bit of the number is in cell 0. Here is a binary representation of the number 9. If we increment 9, we get 10. Below you can see the binary representation of the number 10 on the tape. The idea is as follows, we start at the least significant bit and change all the 1s to zeros until we encounter a 0, which we then change to a 1. For the number 9, we change the first 1 to a 0 and move right. We then read 0 and change it to 1. Finished. How do we need to define our states to perform this increment? Please pause the video to think about it. To increment with a Turing machine, we only need two states, S0 and SH. We start in state S0. If we read a 1, we write a 0 and move the pointer 1 cell to the right. We stay in state S0 because the incrementation is not finished yet. If we read a 0 or a bottom, we write a 1 to the cell and halt. Let us try this with another example. We want to increment the number 11. The binary representation of the number 11 is 1011. We start at the least significant bit, which is 1. The machine reads this 1, writes a 0, and moves the pointer 1 cell to the right. We stay in state S0. Next, the machine reads another 1, again writes a 0, and moves the pointer 1 cell to the right. We again stay in state S0. Then, the machine reads a 0, writes a 1, and stays on the same cell with the pointer. The next state is SH, which is the halting state. So our machine halts. The values on the tape now read 1100, which is the binary representation of 12. The incrementation was successful. Incrementing a binary number is one of the easier tasks for a Turing machine, but Turing machines can do much more. In fact, whatever you can compute with your favorite programming language on your favorite computer, you can do with a Turing machine. So in principle, a Turing machine is as powerful as any computer. But at the same time the Turing machine is very simple and easy to argue about. Various other versions of Turing machines exist, like Turing machines with multiple tapes. 
it can be shown that all these different versions are equivalent to the single tape Turing machine in terms of computability. However, randomization is one crucial concept in computation that this basic machine model cannot capture. To model that, we need to extend the machine model slightly. In a randomized Turing machine, we could have some states where we move left or right randomly, by flipping a coin. Another possibility for realizing a randomized Turing machine is to take a deterministic Turing machine and add an extra infinite tape containing random bits. The execution of different transitions is based on the next random bit on the second tape. Randomization is a valuable tool. A randomized Turing machine does have more power in terms of computability than a regular Turing machine. It seems a bit cumbersome that we always have to define the states and transitions for each new problem. What about just storing the program on the memory tape, like in a modern computer? This is possible, and known as a universal Turing machine. A universal Turing machine receives the encoding of a Turing machine and its input on tape. The universal Turing machine can simulate the behavior of the encoded Turing machine on the input. Moving between different program states is quite realistic compared to real computers. The most significant difference is that we can only move one memory cell at a time. This is why there also exist more realistic machine models, like, for example, the RAM machine. A RAM machine has registers instead of cells, which can store integer values. Additionally, the machine can address these registers indirectly through pointers instead of moving in memory only one cell at a time. RAM machines are equivalent to Turing machines, as they can be simulated on a Turing machine. Since Turing machines are more straightforward, we usually use them to say if a problem is computable. We define, a problem is computable if a Turing machine can compute it. Let's summarize this video. We can use a model of computation, like, for example, a Turing machine, to do computations like with real computers. A Turing machine consists of different building blocks. We have states and transitions define the actual program, and a memory tape with a pointer to read or store values. Different alterations of Turing machines exist, for example, the randomized Turing machine, where randomization is possible, or the RAM machine, with an advanced memory system. Not all these different versions are equal, considering their computability power. Although it is possible to simulate a RAM machine on a universal Turing machine, a randomized Turing machine is strictly more powerful. Thanks for watching this video.